Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm sharing how I put this envelope together. I was asked by some people on Facebook when they saw the envelope if I would share the tutorial for how it was created. And I was like, well, of course I'll do that. So I am playing around with this. By the way, this was my experiment with paper artsy paints, using them with the gel plate. First time using that. And then also to, yeah, uh, there's an oops on here. And then I got stuck in the weirdest place with this. Um, I didn't expect it, but boy, oh boy, did I feel a lot of resistance while I was making part of this. Anyway, it's all in the video for you here. Well, I wanted to create a colorful background all on the envelope. So I grabbed the paper artsy paints that I have in the rainbow here, and I've got the five by seven gel press plate. And I'm just squirting some of that paint on here, brayering it around, and then getting it all over the envelope. Now I'm purposely, when I slap this down, I don't actually want the color to cover everything. I want little bits of all the colors to come peeking through here and there. Now cleaning things off does not bring me joy, so I don't do it very often. I let things just get messy and dirty and grungy and let colors kind of pop up here and there. Now some of the colors that I'm using here in the Paper Artsy are very opaque and some of them are semi-opaque. And how do I know that? Because they actually put it on the label so you can see right there. So some of these colors do a better job covering up what's underneath them because they're opaque. And other ones are not meant to cover things up as much. They're more of the semi-opaque or semi-translucent, however they term it on there. But anyway, it's right on the front of the Paper Artsy Paints for you. Now that I've got a colorful background, it's time to get some stenciling on there. I'm gonna take one of the women from the Sketchy Women with Class stencil that's from over at Stencil Girl Products. I've got a cosmetic sponge and just some plain old black paint there, and I am just stenciling all around it. Now, my sponge, well, it's not covering as well as I want it to, so you're gonna see how I check it. I'm gonna hold the stencil in place with one hand, and I'm gonna lift it up and look underneath it. And if there's anywhere that I've missed or it's not coming through, then I can go back over it again. But because the one hand is holding the stencil in place, it didn't move around or wiggle while I'm checking. Now I didn't stencil her perfectly. Yep, that's an oops. An outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly, and you're gonna see how that gets handled a little bit later in the video. This is an envelope I'm actually going to mail, so I want a fun place to put the address. So I'm gonna use the Alpha Jumble Small Stencil here, and I'm gonna create that space. Now this stencil, or this envelope, is about to be loaded up with 10 stencils and going out to the winner of my big stencil giveaway. Now, if you're seeing this video, that giveaway is probably closed by now, but if you wanna make sure that you know about the next time I have a giveaway, get signed up for my newsletter over at acolorfuljourney.com. That way you'll know as soon as that stuff happens. Now what about the other side of the envelope? What am I gonna do over there? Well, for that, I'm gonna use my Figments of Imagination, the small one. Now I can use it just as a stencil, but I actually want the masks. And all of these masks do come with the set. There's also a large version of the set too, but this one happens to be the small. I'm gonna pick three of these fun creatures and I'm gonna arrange them here where I want them on that side of the envelope. Now you might wonder, why on earth does she have those stuck to washi tape? Well, that's because these are little guys and I always wanna know where I can find them. So the way I store them is I actually stick them to a piece of washi tape and I kinda of just hang it up. That way I can always find them. And one of the things that I treasure about having masks is that you can move stuff around like this. You can audition it, test it out. Do you like it there? Do you not like it there? And the one that I'd originally thought I was gonna put, I totally switched to this one. Now that bird-like thing that's there, it was a little too tall for me. So I'm gonna make it shorter just by sliding it down. So grabbing some very thick and opaque white paint, I'm gonna use a cosmetic sponge and stencil right around those critters and characters. So that once I lift them up, what's left behind are the very colorful creatures with the white outlining them. I'm gonna do the same kind of thing with the sketchy woman over there, but this time using a paintbrush. So I'm very loosely gonna go all around her and I'm not doing this with precision at all because precision doesn't bring me joy right now, so I'm not gonna worry about that, which is why the stenciling oops isn't a big deal. So wherever I'm putting the white paint, I'm covering up the background. And usually not a big deal for me at all, but for whatever reason today, I have become super attached to that background. I felt so much resistance with the idea of covering it up, I could not believe it. I mean, really, I can make another colorful background. It was the gel press plate. I've got more paint. It's just paper. It was crazy to me what was going on in my head. 
So I made a little bit of a compromise. If I did it with the paintbrush and painted over it, a little bit of the background would still kind of peek through. So I didn't completely solidly cover it over because the way, like when I used the cosmetic sponge down there with the figment masks, that gave it a really solid white. And I have to say, in the end, I'm very happy with the look of that loose white paint brushing and letting little sort of hints of the background show up. It doesn't show quite so much in the video here, but in person you can see little hints to those colors coming through. And now for the Alpha Jumble card. I actually wanted it to be a little bit narrower, so I just trimmed a little off of it. And those strips, I actually thought about those there, and then, nah. That's the fun part about being able to audition different things. Now the paint was still a little bit damp, and I thought maybe that would hold it in place, but no, it keeps popping up. So I think we're going to have to bring in some gel medium here to put that down. I remember I just said the paint wasn't completely dry. Yeah, you're about to see what happens with that. As I smear the gel medium around on it, some of that white paint gets mixed in with the gel medium. That is not gel medium that you're seeing there, it's paint. Magic fix for that, oops, yep, a baby wipe. But oh no, I pulled up some of the black paint. Is that a big deal? Is this a horrible mistake? Nah, it's just an oops again, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. So that got me thinking, I could just put the stencil back on top and stencil on it and redo the black, but then I realized, no, I think I want to put the word congrats on there because this is going to be for the winner of the stencil giveaway. So I'm actually going to stencil that congrats. And I wouldn't have thought of that if it hadn't been for the oops with the white paint. And speaking of more oops happening, my sketchy women, one of the things that I love doing with them is making them super sketchy. So by simply taking a pen and sketching over the lines, the edges, that kind of stuff, gives it that hand-drawn look. Plus, it covers up any stenciling imperfections at all that have happened. Now, you can find all the supplies that I'm using for this, as well as the blog post that goes for it, over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com, and the link will either be popping up here on the screen or be down below for you. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of what I do, head on over to the blog at acolorfuljourney.com, where I've also got a free workshop called Permission to Play. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.